Hey everyone, welcome to 10 Questions with the Pro. Today's guest is returning for a second interview. Please welcome Chris Brady from the Chicago Fire. Thank you for having me. No problem. Since our last interview, you've made your pro debut with Chicago Fire. I know you worked really hard to get to that moment. What was it like to start your first pro game? Yeah, it was, uh, it was, um, there was a lot of emotions that went into it. Um, I think from the start of the day, I'm not going to say I was nervous, but obviously, you know, you get a few butterflies in your stomach. Um, from the start of the day, I was trying to keep it as calm as I could. I think we played a midday game around like one or noon. And so uh, I made sure to get up and, uh, you know, eat a good breakfast. And then I, I tried to keep it as peaceful as I could. I went on a walk, listened to like calming music, um, stuff that I liked. And uh, I didn't really hang out with anybody. I, you know, saw my family, obviously. But um, yeah, leading up to the game, it was all I, I tried to keep it as uh, calm as I could. And then I made sure I studied, uh, you know, the schematics that we had for that game um, so that going into the game, I was prepared. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I, I remember very few things, you know, my memory kind of goes in and out, um, throughout the game, but I remember after my first save that I made, um, I remember the crowd got extremely loud. There was a, there was a lot of people there. Um, and then I think, you know, after a few more saves throughout the game, uh, people got a little rowdy, um, uh, you know, after every save I'd make. So, um. That was that was fun, uh, and then obviously at the end of the game, one of my buddies scored uh, his first MLS goal. So uh, that was exciting for both him and me and the club. Uh, so you know, you know, you had a stream of emotions, um, but yeah, it was a great experience. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. With a new season starting soon, what goals have you set for yourself? Uh, yeah. So for me, um, I want to. First and foremost, establish that uh, I'm a, uh, you know, I want to be the starter of this club. Um, I know at the end of the season, I started the last game, but um, uh, that's in the past. This season's a new season. And for me, I, I especially want to establish that uh, I'm the solidified starter. Um, and then further into the season, um, for the U-20 national team, uh, I hope to make a deep run in the U-20 World Cup, which is in May, I believe. Uh, and then for the MLS, um, we do have the personnel. And this year, hopefully, um, with a lot of hard work, we can uh, make the playoffs. Um, yeah. Do you think you deserve to be the starter for Chicago Fire? I'm never going to say I deserve anything. Um, but what I will say and what I always say is that uh, if I am or I'm not, um, I'm just going to keep working hard. And, uh, you know, those decisions I leave up to the coaches. Uh, so, yeah, but as long as you work hard and uh, put, put, in that, put in that grind, um, there should be no doubt. Yeah. A lot has changed since our last interview. You are now in the MLS and we're coming through the academy. I am now in Sporting Kansas City's academy with the goal of becoming a pro. What advice would mm -hmm. you give me that what advice would you give me that helped you get where you are now? Um I would say like I said before work hard. Um don't worry too much about what keepers uh that are older than you and ahead of you. Don't worry too much about what they're doing. Um, focus on your own game and then the skills that you need to improve, focus on improving those. Um, and then I'd say just make sure that uh, one way or another you're getting results with your team. Um, obviously, goalkeeper can't carry the team, but uh, if you're making sure that you do your job, um, results will come. And that comes in the form of shutouts. So if you make sure that, uh, you know, throughout whoever you play in whatever competition, um, Making sure that you guys, you you yourself are getting results, um, I'd say that uh, that definitely helps you in the long run. Yeah. Besides starting your first MLS game, you did a lot in 2022. Last summer, not only did you win the Concacaf U20 Championship with Team USA, you won the Golden Glove Award as the tournament's best keeper. What was that like for you to win with Team USA and be recognized as the best keeper of the entire tournament? Yeah, that was, uh, that was, um, not, not finding the word to describe it, but it was, it was definitely, uh, another crazy experience. Um, 
something that I'm going to remember for a long time and uh, definitely something that people are going to remember me for. Um, I would say it was first off, it was it was just fun. Um, I think throughout the entire tournament, us as a team really gelled well and, you know, we all got to know each other pretty well. So I'd say uh, it was a, a fun experience overall uh, on and off the field getting to know the guys and getting to uh, go through a major tournament like that with the, uh, with the guys that, uh, you know, I consider family. Um, it was definitely fun. And then I also think, uh, yeah, it was, um, it was just, uh, I don't know. It, it was uh, kind of eye opening to see how, like how well we can do when, Obviously, winnings are top priority, but we were, we were, we didn't, we didn't let any of the outside noise kind of affect us. Um, so it was eye opening to see how a team can perform when all we were focused on was uh, ourselves to an extent. Obviously, you have to study the opponent as well, but we were, uh, we were focused on ourselves um, first and foremost, making sure that you know, we got all the little things right and we were doing all the things that we were, uh, you know, advised to do by the coaching staff. Um, and it worked, you know, we put trust in the game plans that they gave us and, uh, we executed it and, uh, yeah, no, it, it, it paid off in the end. Like you said, um, we got the, got the result won the tournament. Um, yeah, it was definitely cool. And it's, you know, it's, it's cool to, uh, you know, get a personal award as well i'm not i'm not in it for any personal awards they don't carry much meaning uh to me because i'm more uh i'm more of a i judge whether or not i'm you know doing well based on my own personal performances uh not the accolades i attain so um but no good to win what was the feeling like knowing that you were the best goalkeeper of the tournament like you had just found out you were the best keeper of the tournament and you received the award. What was that feeling like? Yeah, I was, uh, this kind of speaks to what I was saying earlier about how we weren't really focused on anything else. Um, in the final match, uh, I got subbed out around the 60 or 70th minute. Um, and I remember I sat on the bench and the starting center back was talking to me and he's like, yo, you're going to, you're going to win the golden glove. And I had honestly forgot that was even an award, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, once the game ended, um, I, I felt truly honored that, uh, you know, I was recognized for an award like that. Um, but I would say it was more of a, should have been more of a golden backline award than a golden glove award because, uh, my defenders did tons and tons of work day in and day out throughout that entire tournament. So, um, yeah, I'd say it was definitely more of a team effort than a me a me thing. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how it went. It's awesome. You have had a lot of success in 2022, but sometimes we all know as keepers that games don't go our way. When you have a loss, how do you personally handle it? Yeah, so um, there's a few. If you go back through last season, um, there were a few losses that I can speak to. Um, there was we lost to St. Louis City on the road um, with the MLS Next Pro team. Um, we lost to Columbus Crew on the road. Uh, it was a brutal game, a lot to do back there. Um, but there were a few throughout the year like those um, where they really made you think. And after you uh, after you lose a game that you probably could have won, or you lose a game by you know such a large margin, um, it hurts obviously as a keeper because you know. You don't want to get scored on, and if you do, get scored on quite a bit. Um, many keepers handle it differently. I'd say after a game, I don't let scores, um, you know, influence me too much and influence how I feel too much. Uh, the one thing I do do after a loss is, uh, as soon as I can, I take a look at the film um, and see what I personally could have done better, uh, if anything. And, um, you know, I review that film with uh, as many coaches as I can. So I'm blessed to have, uh, you know, obviously a first team goalkeeper coach, uh, second team goalkeeper coach. And then my agent uh, is also a goalkeeper and was at one point a goalkeeper coach. So, um, you know, I, I look at the film and get as many perspectives as I can on the film. Um, and I, I really just make mental notes. So if there's anything that I could have done 
uh, when those goals have been given up uh, throughout the following week, I'll make sure to, um, you know, really specify my training to eliminate any of those mistakes again. How long have you been doing film for? Um, it was something that uh, I know it hasn't been around forever, but when we were, let's see, when I was in the academy, I think that was the first time. So when I was like a U14, so I'd say probably probably like five, five-ish years ago, um, was probably the first time I was ever exposed to like um, having the option to go back and look at a game and see what we could have done better. Um, and same use for an opponent. You know, you, you take a look at an opponent, what they're good at, what they're bad at, and see what you can do with it. Uh, I would say U14 probably was the – that was probably the first time we were able to use film. Yeah, it definitely helps you knowing how you could have done do something differently or how the play broke down or however you could have done something different to if you got scored on or something like that. Oh, yeah, big time, big time. Over the years, while you, while you were moving up through the academy, were there times that people or yourself doubted you to – hold on. Let me breathe real quick. All right. Yeah, Over the right. years, while you were moving up through the academy, were there times that people or yourself doubted you would make you would make it this far? How did you handle that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think everybody's gonna have people that doubt them, um, no matter who you are. Um, and then I think everybody's gonna at least once or twice in their lifetime doubt themselves. Um, so. Yeah, I'd say myself quite a bit. There was uh, there was a lot of times where you know, I thought to myself like, uh, what am I doing? Like, why, you know, why should I continue if you know the performances aren't there or the results aren't being aren't aren't being uh, gathered? Um, you know, there there was a lot of self doubt and a lot of doubt from other people. Um, but I would say, if you're able to keep in mind the end goal of um, I'm sure you is to make a uh, to become a professional. Um, some keepers, it's to go the collegiate route, um, or you know, simply just be the best keeper you can be. If you keep in mind that end goal, um, it helps you get through a lot. So for me, it was um, you know, it was the thought that uh, right when I was on the cusp of signing pro, um, there was a lot of self doubt of like, am I really good enough to go pro? Um, and then I think just the constant need to constant need and want to just get better as a keeper kind of just over through that self doubt. Um, so, um, you know, you're going to have your doubts, but they're, they're not going to last forever. Um, confidence is a tough thing to gain, but the harder you work, the more confidence you'll get. So I just say, keep, keep working hard and then that will come. Yeah. During the off season, what things do you do to stay in shape and game ready? Yeah, so um, every off season, uh, we we get given a, an off season plan. So that includes uh, lifting, cardio stuff, endurance stuff, and for me, a little bit of goalkeeping specific stuff. Um, so if I'm able to do that, then obviously I follow that uh, to a T. Um, typically, I do it a little different than keepers. I like to, uh, as much as I can, I like to run in the off season. I feel like it's uh, one of the better ways to stay in shape and um, just get your body right for the upcoming season. Um, this this year, uh, I didn't run as much, um, but I did do a lot of um, just a lot of a lot of goalkeeper training uh, with coaches in my area. Um, so yeah, no, I. I uh, can't really take too much time off because, you know, the longer longer time you take off, the harder it is to come back in. Um, so you know, I limit myself to probably a maximum of like a week, week and a half off of like actually not playing soccer. Um, but then, you know, I have to have to be training, I have to be staying sharp. So I'd say, uh, yeah, definitely um, just training was was my my most recent off season. Uh, that, that's what I was up to. Do you enjoy running? Because me as a keeper, I know I personally hate running. Yeah, so for a lot of keepers, it's uh, running is definitely not their favorite thing to do. Um, but uh, I 
suggest probably i mean most keepers that i know who don't like running they kind of stick to uh, weightlifting and strength stuff um which is also good um or bike sessions or even just riding your bike if you're able to in a warm warm place not here in chicago but um yeah no i know i know some keepers don't like to run so there's a lot of other things um including like i said just simply training like i know uh i'm sure for keepers who are born and are growing up and and are training in one one place one city not moving around a lot they know where to train they know what coaches are available so um it's not too hard to uh get good quality training um in the off season but you you get out of it what you put into it so the harder you run the harder you work in the gym the harder you train uh you'll come back out of the out of the off season feeling a lot better yeah having good coaches around us is important for our own growth have there been coaches that you feel made you a better player or in person yeah yeah um i think igor demov who was my academy and he's now the second team goalkeeper coach for the chicago fire and the uh, uh most recent or the ex goalkeeper coach of the first team, um, Aiden Brown, who is now coaching at San Jose. Um, both of those guys really, I think, developed me as a goalkeeper, for one, because it's their job. Um, but definitely as a person, uh, they made me, I'd say, stronger mentally, for sure. Um, you know, as a kid, you're you're not always mentally the toughest. Um, and in a professional environment, you need to be extremely tough. Um, and you need to be able to handle criticism and you know, uh, grown men telling you what to do and how to do it. Um, you need to be able to, uh, yeah, bounce back from, you know, mistakes, be resilient. So there's a lot of things that go into that mental toughness. And I think Aiden and Igor both um, really brought that out of me um, and helped me develop that side of my game because it's also a mental game as opposed to just a physical game. Um, and then I think... You know, like I said before, as a goalkeeper, they developed me loads. I think Aiden was a was a great uh, he was a great a great coach in the uh, department of like positioning on the field, um, positioning and trainings like where to be on the field when the ball's here or here. Uh, Igor kind of developed a lot of techniques that I use, um, you know, diving techniques, uh, catching techniques, throwing techniques, all that. Um, Igor was a big, was a big influencer when it came to that stuff. So, um, yeah, those are probably the two that, uh, influenced me the most. Nice. When taking, when you take a break from soccer, what things do you like to do? Yeah. So, um, I make it, uh, I make it, uh, you know, kind of my priority to, um, if I'm not training and it is the off season, I try to get away from soccer as much as I can because in the off season, when it's time to take time off, that's what you should be doing is taking time off. Um, not worrying about soccer at all, letting your mind kind of, you know, regroup, uh, from the season and, um, yeah, just more relaxed. So one thing, uh, I like to do is obviously I like to play video games. It's a, uh, it's a big thing I've been all about since I was a kid. Um, I've gotten a lot into reading recently, um, so I'm on my what is it, like third book since last fall. I've been uh, been reading quite a bit um, before bed. Um, like I said, running, um, hanging out with friends is a big one because throughout the season, uh, you don't necessarily get to see your friends a whole lot uh, or hang out with them a whole lot. So in the off season, I like to make sure that I'm, uh, you know, uh, seeing and meeting with. Uh, meeting with my boys. Um, and then lastly is family. Um, cause kind of ties into the whole friend aspect of things. You don't really get to see your family as much as you might want to throughout the season because you're so busy with trainings and games and travel and all of that. Um, so this past off season took a vacation with my family just kind of, you know, regrouped. It was good. Um, but yeah, no, there's a, there's, you know, a load of things that I like to do. What do your parents think about everything you have accomplished? I would say they're proud. Um, I would say they're proud. I kind of see it when, uh, you know, they'll 
they're talking to like a coworker or a friend of theirs and then uh, they kind of get into what I've been up to as a, as a professional soccer player. So I can kind of hear the pride in their voices when they talk about that stuff. Um, and it makes me happy to see that they're proud of something that I've, I've accomplished and will continue to accomplish. Um, yeah, I would say first and foremost, they're proud. They're happy for me. Um, and they're just, uh, I would say overall happier that um, I was able to have a dream, pursue it, chase it and then achieve it um and then they're also happy that uh you know i'm continually uh dreaming up new things that i want to achieve and hitting each mark um continually doing better um so yeah i'd say uh, overall they're probably prideful that's awesome do you have mm -hmm. any questions for me um when does your season start uh, we've been, we've, um, we had a winter break and then we've started up a couple weeks ago. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Um, what's the, like, what's the big competition for you coming up? Is there like a big tournament or something that, uh, something's coming up? Um, right now I'm in the process of like two different age groups. So I'm the starter okay. for the 13s, but I'm always playing okay. up with the 14s. Okay. So All it's, right. um, uh, something I've been trying to work on is trying to get used to playing on two different teams all the time because mm -hmm. this previous week I played all week with the 14s and then I think I'm back with the 13s and then I'll probably play with the 13s or 14s. So it gets confusing because I'll sometimes forget names and I'll call one kid another kid's name. Yeah. And it's been like a yeah. weird transition coming from these kids who are almost my dad's size and then coming down to kids that are like almost my six year old <laughs> sister's size. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's something that I dealt with throughout the entire season as I was training with the first team and playing with the second team. So, uh, I think throughout your, your whole young career, you'll be, uh, you'll be dealing with that, but you know, the more, the more you can train and play up the better for you. Um, and when you do have to, uh, go down to your own age group, which is the thirteens, Make sure you're performing at your best and, uh, you know, uh, make it, make sure, like I said, that you're uh, getting results because people will start to notice and then you'll be more wellfully established in the, uh, the 14s age group. And then that's how you continuously move up. So, yeah, no, that's, that's cool though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I have. All right. Thank you so much for coming back on. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Always. Anytime.